Okay, so I fixed our 3D window here, but it's by uh, closing Photoshop and closing the Quixel Suite, and then loading it back up, going to uh, Object Project Load, and then uh, it came back on, so it's working now. Uh, hopefully, uh, we won't have any more problems with that, but um, I think we were working with this lighting before, so let's stay with our same light. Uh, we can go back to different ones, but I just want to keep uh, consistency, so we'll stay with this light. Um, so uh, we were working on before was the windows. So this is our windows here. So um, what I want to do uh, for that is um, we have our windows layer here. And I'm going to click on enter our group of windows. And right now we have a dirt and window. So I really want this window to be more like a, a bluish green. Um, so maybe like not like that blue, but maybe something more in the lines of like a, uh, you know, a teal or, uh, you know, something like this here, which is going to show up now. Okay, so now um, I'm going to add another smart material. And like I said before, even though this isn't a, um, a bottle a glass, um, it still gives us some reflective properties um, that I want to use uh, to make this glass look more real. So I'm going to hit yes for this, just to go in the same group. And um, let's just let Quixel do its thing here. It's just creating all the maps. Um, so now we have something a little bit more interesting um, but I'm also going to go into our, our group here for our bottle and what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this more of a greenish blue um, so I kind of like that green there I'm looking at this one and this one um, so I, I like that uh, our edges uh, I'm going to make like a light like uh, you know like the edge of the window is worn out and then I'm going to bring our opacity down um, and then I'm going to go back to here, change this dirt to more of like a blue. Uh, so we can kind of see it coming through here. Hit OK. And it's going to update our 3D. Um, okay, so. Uh, now I'm actually going to add some more properties. So I'm going to add another smart material, and I'm going to go to glass, and then I'm going to go to dirty glass, and hit yes. Um, just let Quixel do its thing here. Okay, so now we've got this black, black glass. Uh, so first thing I'm going to do is create a mask for it. I'm going to left click on our mask uh, box here and I don't know what I want but I know I want something in the weathering uh, subgroup so uh, what would be weathering on glass? Maybe dirt or um, fumes, uh, edge, might be paint. Um, let's try I've tried dirt before and it gives us a lot of stuff. I don't want like a lot of change. So I'm either try, gonna try top fumes or sandy dirt, which let's try top fumes and maybe kind of see what that looks like. I don't know about that. Um, how about sandy dirt? Um, no, I don't like that. How about just sand? We might have to go with something more of like the edge. Um, that might be a little bit too much, so I'm going to go to uh, Sharp Scratches. Yeah, maybe that might look good on our windows, so I'm going to hit Done. And I'm going to want to change the color of this too. So that looks pretty good. Uh, actually, I kind of like the color. Um, so I'm not going to change the color. Uh, so it does look a little bit not reflective and kind of 
uh, bumpy or, or sandpaperish look. I don't want it that. I want it kind of smooth and like in the light. It looks like a matte finish. It looks like it's plastic. I want it to be like a gloss finish. So um, what I'm going to do for that is clear that mask. Just erase it. Okay, so now we're not getting any shine on here. So um, I'm going to left click on this mask. And we're going to try something like uh, occlusion. That's, yeah, that's what I want. I want kind of like this outside of our uh, glass kind of uh, uh, mask, just on the edges. Um, so let's see what that does. Okay, so we can see right here it's creating this. That's kind of the look I was going for. So even if we zoom in and maybe go to like, uh, this square is a good example because you can see the whole window. Um, it created these edges. So I'm going to make this like maybe darker or lighter. I'm going to see what looks better. Okay, I can't really tell. Maybe it has to update first. So it made it darker. I wonder what lighter would do. Actually, we can kind of see it in our preview down here. So let's try lighter and then try it here. Okay. So we got to decide if we want to go lighter or darker. I think darker would be better because it's supposed to be dirt. And dirt isn't light. Okay, that's just subtle enough, it might just work. Um, I'm getting a lot of shine still on it. Now let's see what this dirty glass adds to this. We might not even need this. I don't think it really gives us much, so I'm just going to delete it. So now I'm going to go back to our main group. Um, we kind of spent a little time on that, so I'm going to save, save project. So our old concrete here. I'm going to go into this group and what I'm going to do here is basically uh, change these colors to darker colors. In fact, we might just need to change just this one. And I think that that does it for that. Uh, so let's go back to our main group. And then I want to do our uh, brass. Let's, let's get this brass looking kind of uh, worn out. And maybe you know a lot of these uh, edges are filled in with dirt by now. They've been sitting there a long time. Uh, you know, this thing was built in back in like the 70s, I think, so it's been there a while. Um, even cleaning it, it still can't get these like, you know, little tiny crevices and everything. So, um, that is going to be called our brass, which is down here. So, let's just enter this group. Right now we just have a solid brass and the mask. So, I want to add another smart material to it. And we're going to add some uh, some soot. So I'm going to go to our dirt, and I'm going to add some soot below. And hit yes. Um, so we're kind of getting the idea, you know, you can use these different masks to get different colors and, and cavities and fill in dirt. And, you know, and it's all basically based on the normal map and the ID map. Uh, wow, okay, so that's really dirty. Um, I kind of like that, but I kind of, it's almost too strong. Um, but that is a nice look. It does look weathered and dirt. Um, but I think it's a little too much. So um, what I'm going to do is it applied to everything. So, you know, maybe this is really bad here, but maybe this is easier to clean. So I don't really want to make it the same at everything. So I'm going to come back to here. And what I'm going to do is... Um, I'm going to leave that and create another smart material. And this one will be, um, I'm going to type in uh, mis miscellaneous or something and um, see if we can find some, uh, some actual like soot, like a solid soot. So create that, hit yes. And the key to doing all this is basically making sure that you're masks are 
Whoa, okay. I was not expecting that, but um, to making sure your mask work in your favor. And you know what, you could even, you don't have to rely just on the Quixel Endo Dedo uh, interface. We can come over here and turn this off. And it might not update in here right away, but you can tell it updates right here. So let's say I did want some more soot in this area. I can go to this mask layer here, go to our brush, uh, grab like a, uh, you know, and this would be a perfect place for like a Wacom tablet or, you know, a, a different uh, pressure sensitive um, uh, device. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to uh, click on our, our uh, black here, and that will get rid of uh, this mask, so this black here, so this soot. Um, and I'm just going to go in here and just kind of delete, paint this out. Just kind of randomly maybe, you know, um, uh, just, you know, maybe not much on here, but, um, and then uh, I'm going to go in here and grab maybe a different brush, uh, maybe like a, a blurred round brush and get rid of all this extra uh, stuff here. I'm going to bring the opacity down more for this area here. Actually, I didn't want to go that far with it. And I think Control z in Quixel uh, does disrupt it. So if you want to go back for anything, go to your history and then just go back, you know, two or three steps or, or whatever many you, you have set for in your settings. Um, so I'm going to kind of just keep painting here and um, I want most of this part up here to be clean. Uh, so I'm going to just bump it to 100. And maybe like the top part's clean. Maybe some of the sides are cleaner. Um, you know, enough dirt that it's uh, still there, but not so much. So I'm also going to add a mask to the soot below. Um, so I'm going to left click on that. In fact, no, stop, uh, cancel that, just hit this X here. And I want to see what this looks like so far. So I'm going to hit refresh. And anytime you mess with the mask in Photoshop, you always have to hit refresh. Um, so that's kind of what we have. So uh, I like it, but it's almost too dirty, right? So if I turn off the sip below, I'm going to see what that does. And if we can get away with just making a mask for this, mostly that's what's causing everything. So let's take off our soot here and just kind of see what this looks like. Okay, so it's a lot more shinier without that on. So both of these are gonna need pretty good mask. So I'm gonna do this top one first and I'm gonna left click on it in fact, well, we don't have to add the mask for the shape again because that's already in our main group. So let's left click on this mask and we're going to need this to cover almost every inch of this thing, every centimeter. The only thing I want is just a random different, you know, um, a different, uh, some hint of it, but very little. So it looks like this is going to do the trick because... Um, it's only affecting the bottom here and some inside and some other parts over here. So I'm going to hit done. And hopefully that helped out with our shininess of our brass here. And I think it did. See, so mostly it's shiny. We just have a little bit of dirt down here, which is probably the, you know, the most common place for it near the ground. Um, and then we have some stuff on the side here. Uh, so, and being that that's the um, side that has uh, the um, hinge on it, it's going to be more dirtier there. Uh, and we have a lot right here. Um, so I don't know if I like that specifically right there. Um, but it does kind of show up pretty good over here. So, I'm going to see if this, it's got to be this one affecting it because this one's not even on. So. What I'm going to do is go back to our Photoshop, and um, if I turn this off, I can see what that affects. So I'm going to go to our, our mask here, 
and I'm going to try to paint uh, this part out. Uh, but I don't want it 100% totally. And I want a little smaller brush. So I don't like that that's so solid black. Um, okay, so that looks good. So let's hit refresh. And we'll see that go away. And then I want to turn on our soot below our second soot and see what that kind of does. And then I'm going to make a mask for that. Okay. So that, that really dirtied it up, okay? So I want that effect, but I don't want it for everything. So this is going to be an important mask because I want it for these crevices here, but I don't necessarily want it for this plain flat piece here. So I'm going to left click here. And our preview mask is really going to show us how this is. And I think um, sharp cavities is going to be the one. It sounds like it's uh, what we need. So, yep, looks exactly what we want. We want it, the white to be in these detail parts here, and then this flat part, this black, or there's going to be no effect there. So, I'm going to hit done. Um, and let it... Uh, does this to all of our maps and we can see now this is with it on and if we turn this off it'll update and this is with it off so it's very subtle I, I almost think we need another type of mask on there to add to it um, it's almost too subtle so I'm gonna left no I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a different type of selection I'm gonna clear the mask That wasn't exactly what I was. I, I was thinking it'd be a little bit more dirtier in the crevices. So I'm going to left click on this and try a different one. So maybe that was sharp cavities, maybe soft cavities. Uh, I just want to see how this looks. Um, you know, I don't really want it right here. I don't want that right here. So. Let's go just down the line here and just kind of see. I know it's going to be one of these top pieces that have like these, uh, you know, um, uh, points that dip into the normal map. And it's probably going to be more of our black options than our white. So that's edges. Let's see what sharp edges do. It's kind of what we're looking for. That's not anything that we're looking for. Um, occlusion, maybe? Uh, rich occlusion? Maybe something like that. Um, try acid. Let's try define shadow. No. How about some... Uh, paint wear. I know it's not paint, but it might still give us a good result. Let's try it. Uh, you know, it's something new, I guess. It's it's affecting a lot of it, but it's uh, different areas. Okay. Uh, yeah, I can live with that. Um, looks pretty good. Uh, so, it's got some wear on it, right? Okay. So what I'm actually going to do now is I'm going to pause the video and we'll come back and we'll finish up the rest of these materials. And then um, the other map, map B, um, you know, I think we've got into this enough where you can kind of get the idea. It's the same kind of procedures. Uh, it's just different materials. Um, you know, and what you could do even is say we, we go back to uh, our main concept here our main grouping here and we want this new concrete to be the same concrete on map B that we have right here you can go to save smart material and you can just type in new concrete and then like uh, I don't know you know um, map A uh, from map A from map A and then hit save and it'll go through and it'll save this whole grouping of stuff here so we can just apply the same material to the other map and it'll go through a little rendering process here and then at the end, it'll give you a nice, good look of the material on a, a sample, um, sample sphere. Um, 
it's a lot like a V-Ray material previewer if you've used V-Ray before. Same kind of concept, you know. Um, so, um, so here we go. That's our concrete that we saved. You can kind of see the material and the different views, the shading, the lighting. Um, so you just click the X, and then it saves that. So. Uh, yeah, so I'm just going to pause the video and we'll come back. Okay, so we've done our brass and the dirt and the brass. Um, but I just wanted to clean up one part of it. Um, if we go to our brass, which is down here, and I'm going to click in the dirt layer, which is the soot 2, soot below. Um, I just want to add some more black to this mask so it's, that uh, that's not so... Uh, dirty there. Um, so um, I think that'll be it. That'll be all I'm going to clean up there. But so next we want to um, uh, I'm going to work on the different parts of the uh, let's just go down the list here. The steel here. Um, okay so we're going to be doing the steel here and steel here. So if we go into this group labeled steel um, I think if we uh, get rid of this edgeware, um, or at least paint the mask a little bit, because it's kind of too much on the bottom here. So this is it here. So I'm just going to paint with my brush and just kind of clean up this bottom edge here, because I don't want that to be uh, um, that dark there. Um, so I think that about does it for the steel. Um, so let's go down to this red plastic and go into this group. Um, that is going to be, uh, this is actually going to be a poster, and this is going to be like a, a poster here. But the red plastic is going to go on these two um, uh, doors right here. So what I want to do for that is um, basically uh, just make this a little bit more a redder, a brighter red. Okay. And then let's go to our blue plastic. Um, that's just going to be pretty much the same too. Um, so let's move on to our um, next one, which is our, our rock. Now one of these rocks is granite and one is marble. Um, so we can turn this one off and see what it is. This is the granite one. So if we go into this section here and um, make our stone more of a, a blue uh, maybe not that bright a blue, um, more like our, our reference here, um, which is, uh, here's our reference here, so, um, it's this blue down here, so it's going to be like a blue noise, um, this is going to be the same thing, so it's uh, a little bit different on our, on our picture reference, but it's the same, this should be the same as this, so let's add some, some dark dots in there, and then, um, I'm going to make these stone cavities like a darker blue. Um, and maybe more bluish to them. And then the actual stone edges. Um, I'm going to make really dark. Uh, but more of a bluish. Okay. And then what I'm going to do for this also is uh, our stone material. I'm going to scale down uh, the um, texture for it. So if we go to our albedo again and then zoom in down here on it, um, this has to look like granite. So it looks like this is a little bit too dark. Uh, actually not that one, it's the other one. Oh, looks like Quixel crashed on us. Uh, so all we gotta do is just reopen it up and since we still have these files uh, open, it will immediately just recognize that and start working on our project again. Um, it was there. There we go. So I want to change this to a, a match our blue a little bit more. And then um, bring this texture scale down maybe to like negative four and see what that gives us. If we go back onto our Albedo. It's kind of more of what I'm looking for, like a, a you know, a, um, noisy. Um, but I want to bring this blue 
almost to right there. Now let's do this marble here, which is going to be on our other uh, rock uh, layer. Um, so we'll have this rock layer be our marble, and I want to make our stone more of a blue. Maybe not that crazy of a blue, but maybe something more like in the lines of that. And then um, for the cavities, I want to make this a little bit lighter blue. And then the edges, um, something uh, more like a, I don't know, a white or something. Um, let's just keep it kind of light right here. And then I'm going to add uh, my stone to here above our edges and left click on our mask and the perfect mask for this uh, that it's, I think is going to work the best is this um, uh, flaky uh, paint heavy and we'll kind of see what that looks like and hit done so now it kind of looks more like a marble um, so I'm going to go back to our blue here make this maybe a little bit darker and then this stone a little bit darker and pretty much all of them a little bit darker um, so that it kind of looks more like marble um, I wish there was like a marble preset but there's not really um, so we'll just have to go with that um, so now let's move on to the next material which is our uh, wood um, a varnished wood. So let's double click into this group and I'm going to make the actual wood more of like a red. So I'm going to go down with it and also look at our reference here. So it's going to be this outside wood. So it's not going to be that red but it's going to be a good you know brownish red. Um, and that looks pretty good so let's keep that at least for now. And then um, I want to go to our uh, our brass we already have done. This soot here, um, I think that's already about covered because uh, all it needs to be is like a, a black line here. I think it just maybe needs uh, to left click on the mask and just add some, some random like noise in there or something, something that's, you know, um, going to make it kind of, uh, you know, maybe something inclusion. Um, so it's not entirely black, it's kind of got some, some uh, spots in it that are lighter than black. Okay, so now um, these parts here that are black, uh, I don't know if that's, that's not really going to be a problem because we're not using these parts. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to go to File, Save Project. So I'm going to hit this button here which says Save All Maps. Um, but it is pretty satisfactory enough, just this alone. So, uh, just to show at the end of the video, at the end of what this map looks like, I'm going to open 3D, and hopefully we can get this showing um, in 3D. So if I click the space bar, or hit the space bar, and go on to our map, and then hit uh, refresh, hopefully we can kind of see in different lighting situations what we have so far. So uh, I hope you learned a little bit more about Quixel and how you can customize it to make your own materials using the presets and the mask and the colors and reflectiveness and all the good things that makes Quixel a, a really cool program to use. Um, you can get quick results and all you really need is a normal map and a map ID. Um, and you can separate all these materials and get metal and get copper and rust and wood uh, it's just a pretty sweet material, even if it's just the start of your texturing procedure. You can always go in here and add more dirt to like this this concrete blocks or you know add more you know scrapes into the wood.